So it's been a while since I've recorded a video in Scrubs and I'm in these today because I've just finished recording a collab with the Aspiring Medics where we've recorded some examples of role play stations that could come up in your MMIs and how to tackle them. Whilst preparing for this video I realised that there are a lot of tips that I've talked about on this channel before in interview videos that I've made but the advice that I've given with regards to role play stations is really scattered across different videos and I've never really put it together into one place. So in this video I'm going to be putting together some advice on how to tackle the role play stations to make sure that you do really really well no matter what the role play scenario is that comes up and communication tips that will become second nature to you once you hopefully fingers crossed pass your MMIs and become a medical student. In this video we'll go through some of those tips and how you can impress your examiners by already knowing this stuff that a medical student is expected to know. There'll be a lot of applicants that aren't aware of these small details so using these will really help you stand out to the interviewers. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Hiba and I'm a final year medical student studying at the University of Manchester. So firstly, no matter what type of role play station it is, whether it's giving a patient some information or asking a relative about support or things at home, whether it's talking to someone about a stressful situation, always remember to introduce yourself with your full name and your role. It sounds really silly and minor, but you'll be surprised how many interviewees do not even introduce themselves to the person that they're role playing with. Imagine if you were that patient or you were that relative or someone in hospital and someone's just come up and started talking to you and you have no idea who they are. That would be really weird and confusing. So the first thing that you can do to impress your interviewer, introduce yourself, give your full name because that sounds a lot more professional than just your first name and also introduce your role. In role play stations in your MMI they will usually give you a role. So they'll say you're a medical student and go on and do this role play station or you're a GP colleague or you're a junior doctor for example. So whatever role they've given you outside of the interview station, remember that and go in and introduce yourself with your name and that role. Honestly, write these down, take notes because people do forget these small things. And role play stations are incredibly common in MMIs now. I'd be very surprised if you didn't have a role play station in at least one of your MMIs if not all of them. The next thing you want to do after you've introduced yourself is to ask their name. Honestly, again, the number of interviewees that ask the name of the person they're talking to is lower than you'd expect, even if they have the person's name outside the station. So even if it says, oh, this is Jennifer Parker, go and explore her concerns. When you've actually met them in person, you're obviously going to ask their name again. So once you've introduced yourself, ask their name again and also ask if it's okay for you to call them by that name. This person may not want to be called Jennifer, they may want to be called Mrs. Parker. And this is really common in real life. Patients often don't want to be called by their legal name name and they go by something else. And then the next tip going off that is to make sure you're using that name throughout the conversation. A lot of applicants will get to the point where they do ask their name, but then they never actually use it during the conversation. So what was the point of asking what their name is and how they would like to be called. When you use a person's names, interact with them during your conversation, it makes it really personal and just helps you develop a report and brings your communication up a level. Again, these seem like small changes, but honestly, they're communication skills that are drilled into us as medical students, which shows you how important they are. And even when recording this video with aspiring medics, I was doing all of these things without thinking about them, but the majority of applicants won't be doing this stuff. So if you're already already doing these small things in your role play stations, it will really make you stand out to the person who's interviewing you. The next thing I wanted to talk about is often in role play stations, you get told to give a patient or a patient's relative some sort of information or even if that's not the case and you're not being told to give them information in the role play station that person is obviously there for some sort of reason so the next thing I would always do in a role play station is to ask the person that you're role playing with so the the patient or the relative or whoever they may be, what their current understanding is of why they're actually there with you. Ask the person what they already know because that will really help you and give you a starting point of where to go from with regards to giving information or whatever it is that you're asked to do in the role play station. Again, this will be really impressive to your interviewer because instead of going straight in with your agenda that you've read outside the MMI station, you're actually asking the patient or the relative or whoever it is what their concerns are and what they already know and, and 
what they think they're here for. Next, I would say in a role PlayStation, if you're asked to give someone big news, so it may not be bad news, just big news. Uh, maybe a patient requires overnight stay and that's really big news for the patient or anything along those lines, anything that you think might shock the patient. It would be a really nice gesture to ask if the patient wants to know that information now um, and wants to have this conversation now or if they'd rather wait for a relative to be with them or if they'd rather wait for a friend to come by so then they can have the conversation with some support. So I know this seems like a lot and it seems like oh, I'm asking you to do all these things at the start of the station but it's literally just a matter of is it okay for me to carry on with this conversation now or would you like someone else to be with you and that's it um, that's all you need to say and it's just a way of showing empathy and again taking your communication up to a, another level because you're showing the interviewer that you know that what you're about to say may have um, an impact on the patient in the sense that they may need someone there for them after we've had this conversation. Next thing I'd say is to remember that the interviewer can't see or hear what you're thinking. So if you've got a role PlayStation where it's a really agitated person, whether that's a student, whether that's a patient, whether it's a relative, someone really agitated or really worried or really angry, and you're thinking in your mind like, oh my gosh, this patient is really angry, um, I need to deal with this empathetically, the interviewer can't hear your thoughts and the interviewer doesn't know that you're thinking that. So whenever you see a reaction like that, always verbalize it in your role PlayStations. This will honestly be really impressive. So always verbalize what you're seeing if the person in the role PlayStation is really angry and talking really loudly and shouting at you or something like that, just verbalize it. You look really frustrated. Is everything okay? Or if they're talking really slowly in a low tone, you may want to say, you look quite upset. Is, is everything okay? And that way the interviewer will see that you've acknowledged those cues rather than if you did notice them but didn't actually point them out. Obviously you want to be empathetic but really find every opportunity to show the interviewer that you are being empathetic and you are noticing that they have told the actor to behave a certain way in your role PlayStation. Next, if you're in a situation where the person, the student, the child, whoever it is in your role PlayStation is reluctant to do something or they really don't want to have a scan or they really don't want to take a certain medication, if they really don't want to stay overnight in hospital, always explore the reasons why. The interviewers will always have decided a backstory to all of the people that are in your role PlayStations. There will always be something going on at home or some other concern that they have which is why they're showing reluctance for example you can say can I ask why you're making this decision and trust me there will always be something there so instead of just being a persuasive force and kind of taking it from the angle of explaining why it's important again and again try and go the other way and try to find out why it is that they're making this choice and then you can try to formulate a plan of whether or not there's something else you can do to help with that so for example the patient's had a really bad heart attack but they don't want to stay in hospital it would be perfectly fine to explain why it's important to be in hospital after a heart attack but then also asking why that is does the patient have some sort of responsibilities like children or pets the next thing i would try to kind of put into any role PlayStation, if it fits, is just to offer help. The whole point of role PlayStations is to test your communication skills. So most of the scenarios are going to be things like a patient's having difficulty doing something or a relative or a child or someone is in a sticky situation, basically. So I can bet you that you can fit this next tip into any station that you have and that is to just offer help and just towards the end of your role play station just say is there anything I can do to make this better is there anything I can do to help or is there anything I can do to make this easier for you oftentimes you'll be told in the MMI that you're a medical student or a junior doctor most likely you'll be told you're a medical student so there's not a huge amount oftentimes that you'll be able to do but just saying that sentence giving that offering of help is something that will look really nice in your station even though the patient or the person in the role play station will probably end up saying no there's not really much you can do but it's something really good to put in there. One thing to probably be aware of is knowing your limits as the role that you've been given so knowing your limits as a medical student if they tell you that you're a medical student in the role play station so just avoid trying to give any false promises or false hope to whoever's in your role play station. For example if there's a mum who's really upset about 
her child that's been admitted to um, hospital who's had like a major trauma or something like that. It's very tempting to say, um, I'm sure everything will be okay. I'm sure she'll be fine. But those things are actually perceived negatively because as a medical student or even as a doctor, you don't really know if that's going to be the case. So don't give any false promises, don't give any false hope. Other ways you can try to be empathetic are saying phrases like, I can't imagine how difficult this must be for you. I can only imagine what you must be going through right now. Things along those lines, rather than saying, I'm sure your daughter will be fine, that would be perceived negatively. Another thing that I just remembered off that is, um, try to avoid saying, I understand to a patient who's frustrated or upset, or for example, if you've got a role PlayStation where someone's going, Going through bereavement instead of saying I understand try saying something along the lines of I can't imagine or uh, I can only imagine because realistically you can't understand and oftentimes the person will reply back and say actually no you don't understand what I'm going through because oftentimes we we haven't been in those situations obviously this is going really deep um, and advanced if you did say i understand that would be perceived as you trying to show empathy so it's not a major thing at this stage but the whole point of this video is to go through tips on how to stand out in those role play stations so if you can try to substitute those i understand for i can only imagine it will make you stand out to your interviewer and will really impress them the next couple of points if you have your interview coming up soon. I'm sure you'll have heard these thrown around all the time, but read Good Medical Practice. It comes in really handy for these role play stations because it will give you a good idea of how the GMC, the General Medical Council, would expect a person to behave in certain situations. It's a really long document. I don't think you need to read all of it, but if you just skim through it and kind of get the general gist of it, it will come in really handy. For example, if you have a role play station about a stressed colleague or a colleague who is neglecting work or doing something wrong at work, those are stations that may well come up and that did come up in my MMI. So knowing what the course of action to take in that situation would be is really helpful and the way to go about that is by reading good medical practice. Just going off that with a kind of similar rationale to what I just said, read about medical ethics, I'm sure you already have. Having a good understanding of the ethical pillars and understanding things like capacity and consent can really come in handy if you have a related role play station and it's one of those things that if you have haven't read upon it there's no way that you'll be able to like wiggle your way through it. Something else I'd say is make sure that you're really listening to the person that you're talking to in the role play station. Your medical school interviews are obviously really important, really nerve wracking, a lot is counting on them. And because you want the role play stations to go so well, it's often really tempting to, instead of listening to the person in front of you, whilst they're speaking, you end up thinking about what you want to say next. So try to avoid doing that. Really try and listen to what the person is saying rather than thinking about about what you want to say next. That will make the role play station flow a lot better because you will actively be answering the questions they have instead of changing the subject again and again. So listen to what they have to say and respond accordingly. So if you want to see these tips being put into action, I have just recorded a collab with the aspiring medics. We've recorded five examples of role play stations that can easily come up in your MMI and how to tackle them. Hopefully now that you've watched this video, you'll be able to look out for those subtle communication tips that are put into the video. I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you did even remotely, then please do consider subscribing. I make content similar to this, so I'm sure you'll find other videos interesting too. I have other videos on my channel where I've talked about MMI tips, not specific to roleplay, but just MMIs in general, um, which I think you'll find really helpful if you're nearing that time of the year. I wish you all the best with your MMIs. I'm sure you'll do amazingly, especially in your roleplay stations now that you've watched this. Make sure to do lots of practice that's one thing I forgot to say earlier. It's all well and good just talking to yourself in the mirror, but asking a friend, especially if uh, you have a friend also applying to do medicine or dentistry and acting out some role play stations with them is going to be really helpful practice before your interview. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.